Welcome to a Knauer Academy video tutorial on the topic Knauer HPLC columns and column selection and especially about columns for food analysis. Maybe you are already familiar with Knauer columns and you know that they can be split up into three major groups of HPLC faces and in this video we are concentrating on um, the columns that are used for the analysis of sugars, organic acids and alcohols these are our polymer-based faces. So we are talking about these columns right now. For the other ones, check out our different video tutorials. When you want to characterize these faces, you have to take into account different things for these faces. So starting, of course, with a polymer gel that is filled in this column. So every time you want to analyze the characteristics of this column, you have to look of the type of this polymer that is filled in, so the polymer or the copolymer network. Of course, it's also very important to know the particle size of these columns and the cross linkage of this polymer, what makes some characteristics for these columns. But on the other side, there's also the modification. So for these columns, we are talking here about ionic species. So the characteristic that is brought onto this polymer gel. So this defines the complete type of your face and the ionic form, of course, and therewith overall chemistry of this HPLC phase is defined by the modification. And you have to know all these characteristics from both sides, from the polymer gel and from the modification, to know about the selectivity of your column. So whenever you want to know the selectivity Keep in mind, everything's important, polymer gel and modification. So, we're offering two, five different ionic forms of these columns and let's have a look what these are. So, you can go via the application area if you want to choose the ionic form. So, if you want to analyze organic acids, sugars, alcohols and sugar alcohols or even mixtures of all these substances, you have to use a polymeric column with the ionic form H. So this would be the perfect one to characterize all these analytes. If you want to analyze uh, different carbohydrate mixtures up to a degree of polymerization of 4, so these are really small sugars, you have to use the ionic form lead or maybe calcium for this. This would be here the perfect column choice. But if you want to go higher, analyze also sugar oligomers and bigger carbohydrates up to a degree of polymerization of 8, you will have to use a sodium or even a silver form of these column. And again, I told you also the support is important for our columns. The polymer gel support is always a sulfonated styrene divinyl benzene copolymer. So with this uh, information, you know everything about the column and can make the right choice. But what is now the separation mechanisms for these um, columns? So it's really different from the classical HPLC columns that are based on silica gel, because here you have a separation mechanism based on these ionic species. So what is this mechanism for the sugars, for the organic acids and the alcohols? And the answer is, it is not so easy to define. So this is always a mixture of different separation mechanisms. So you have always a little bit of ion exchange that's going on here. You always have some partition mechanisms that are working with your analytes and the polymer gel. Also size exclusion of occurs, of course, because you have um, cross-linking of your polymer. But the two maybe most important characteristics are these ion exclusion mechanism and also the ligand exchange mechanism that's going on in these typical applications for these columns. And because not everybody is so familiar with it, I want to keep an eye and give a little short explanation what it means, what ion exclusion and ligand exchange really mean. So we start here with the ion exclusion mechanism and you see here a little overview of what's happening here. So we are talking about ion exclusion and compared to an ion exchange column that uses these attractive forces between anion and cation, um, analytes, the ion exclusion mode uses repulsive forces between anion uh, of analytes and the packed gel. So the ion exclusion mode 
is never used solely. General, it's always a balance with different modes, but this ion exclusion mode is really often uh, coming happening when you analyze organic acids. So here it is really important. The second mechanism that's always beside is this ligand exchange. So these ligand exchange columns are always modified with this functional group and this is what you saw most often a metal cation and we call it the counter ion. So the counter ion is brought on this mm, polymer gel in your column. The ligand mo exchange mode is now used most often for saccharides and here uh, the interaction between the positive charge of the metal cation and the negative charge of the hydroxyl group on the saccharide is used. So the sugar always has these um, negative charges and interacts perfectly with a polymer gel. And this is um, yeah, the base of this ligand exchange mechanism. The number of these hydroxyl groups as well as the configurations influence of course the strength of the interaction. So depending on the counter ion and also on the configuration of the sugar you are analyzing, this mode is working. It's a really complex mode and this is just a really brief and short overview about what happens in your column. So. To sum it up, the HPLC of sugars, organic acids and alcohols has really easy methods. So typically you are using these columns in an isocratic mode, typically always organic solvent free, what is really nice because you're um, saving money and also protecting the environment because you're not using any organic solvents. They are used at higher temperatures because they are really um, pressure uh, not pressure resistant, you have to use high temperatures and you often use refractive index detection, what is perfectly used for these sugars and organic acids. So in complete you have really easy, robust, cost effects and eco-friendly methods and this is why we really really like these columns and they are perfectly suited for this food analysis. So now we are already at an end for this presentation and if you want to learn more about HPLC columns, you're always invited to write a mail to columns at knauer.net, browse our internet pages, you are highly invited, there are a lot of explanations for our different columns or of course we have more Knauer Academy videos you can watch there. <laughs>